The Japanese government has been struggling to designate final disposal sites for radioactive waste generated by the Fukushima nuclear accident. Local authorities remain opposed to the idea of burying contaminated materials on their territory. Now government officials say they will rethink the way they select the storage sites. The Environment Ministry plans to ask each prefecture to dispose of contaminated mud and ash from incinerators on its territory. It's hoping to build new disposal sites at five prefectures. The ministry has designated two state-owned forests in Tochigi and Ibaraki Prefecture as possible sites. But opposition from the host municipalities has blocked both projects. Senior Vice Environment Minister Shinji Inoue says officials will include the opinions of local leaders in the decision-making process. I must admit there was a lack of communication between the central and local governments in the process of choosing disposal sites. The ministry will seek the advice of a panel of experts. It's also planning to conduct drilling surveys to narrow down the choice for final disposal sites. It's been almost two years since the disaster in Fukushima. The accident at the Daiichi power plant caused many to question the safety of atomic energy. It also drew attention to another complex issue, how to dispose of nuclear waste. The Fukushima plant suffered a string of meltdowns and hydrogen explosions. Workers struggled to keep reactors cool after the tsunami knocked out the electricity supply. But that wasn't the only problem. Right next to the reactors are pools that store spent nuclear fuel. The pools started to heat up after the power went down. Emergency crews had to pump in water to avoid a worst-case scenario, a meltdown of the fuel rods. Thousands of rods are stored at the Daiichi plant, and thousands more at plants around the country. They are the byproduct of half a century of atomic power generation. And it keeps piling up. Japan has 17,000 tons of spent nuclear fuel that needs to be disposed. NHK World's Yoichiro Osaki has been covering nuclear energy issues. He says developing suitable technology is not the only challenge. Japan's original plan was to recycle nuclear fuel, but technical problems have brought the project to a standstill. The reprocessing plant has never gone into operation. Nuclear waste remains toxic for tens of thousands of years. Keeping people and the environment safe for this length of time is a huge challenge. One idea is to bury the waste deep underground. Japan's government has backed this solution, as have many other countries. They say they have the technology to do this safely. Japan's plan for underground barrier has been on the drawing board for more than a decade. It would start by separating the waste into cylinders. The cylinders, 1.3 meters high and 70 centimeters in diameter, will be encased in concrete. The plan is to bury them 300 meters below the surface. They would be housed in a huge repository, the size of about 200 soccer stadiums. The problem is where to bury it. Local authorities would have to give their permission. Efforts to find a site began in the year 2000. The government had hoped strong incentives would encourage bids to host the facility. It has offered up to 2 billion yen in subsidies to any region that applies for a survey. But 11 years after launching the bidding process, not a single candidate has emerged. It's a similar story in many other parts of the world. 30 countries 
and one region operate nuclear plants. Only two have decided where to build a long-term disposal site. They are Finland and Sweden. The United States has the largest number of reactors. The Obama administration introduced a new disposal plan in January, but it won't be implemented until 2048, 35 years from now. Finding a place to safely store nuclear waste was never going to be easy. The accident at Fukushima has made it that much harder. This issue goes beyond whether Japan should abolish nuclear energy. Whatever the decision, this country and others have to deal with enormous amounts of waste and will have to do so for many years to come. After the nuclear disaster at TEPCO's power plant at Fukushima, the Japanese had huge cleanup problems. One was to remove radioactive substances from massive amounts of water. Experts said doing it efficiently was difficult. But a scientist from Egypt is well on his way to meeting the challenge. NHK World's Noriyuki Sakai reports. Professor Shalif El Safdi works at the Research Institute in Tsukuba. The city lies north of Tokyo. The Egyptian scientist has developed a new substance that removes radioactive cesium from water. During the crisis, the nuclear plant at Fukushima produced massive quantities. I am introducing this technology for Fukushima people and the people like these people who are saving Japan even now. This is where Shelif works, the National Institute for Materials Science. This is what Shelif developed. The powder plays a significant role in extracting radioactive materials from water. An expert in nanotechnology, Shelif is studying a material called HOM. The particles are invisible to the naked eye, as are its many holes, each about one millionth of a millimeter in diameter. Shelif developed a technology to separate cesium from other materials by having radioactive substance absorb into these holes. The HOM is added to cesium contaminated water. This magnet attracts these HOM particles holding the cesium. Easy separation. And you have a clean water something. Shelif came to Japan 12 years ago after receiving his PhD. He was keen on researching the latest technology for treating water. That's because in his home country and the other African nations, Groundwater often contains arsenic, a toxic chemical. In Japan, he had been studying ways to remove it from water. In March 2011, the nuclear accident overwhelmed the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Shelif and his family fled Japan immediately at the instructions of the Egyptian government. But a few days after he arrived in Egypt, he received an email from his boss. What happened for Japanese friend, it will happen for us. What they are going to make it, we are going to make it. One week after the email, Shalif was back at work in Japan. Since then, He's been developing a new materials to extract radioactive contaminants from water. Within three months, Shalif developed new absorbents for radioactive iodine and strontium. <laughs> then he finished developing the new type of HOM. Now it was possible to remove cesium from water more efficiently. Until then, experts had considered that process very difficult. 
Japanese water treatment and chemical companies are showing a lot of interest in his method. This material seems to be highly effective. We are hoping to see how much further the process can be developed. I am in the middle of the actions, middle of the disasters, so I am like you guys all, and I hope it will be success to be finalized in the safe Fukushima and safe world. The nuclear accident changed Shelf's life. He says he now wants to do more research into technologies that solve Japan's environmental problems. Noriyuki Sakai, NHK World, Tsukuba City. Before Sheriff's method is used in the cleanup, he'll have to give a trial demonstration in the affected area. Then he'll have to work with chemical companies and the government. Oregon Senator Ron Wyden will ask the Government Accountability Office to investigate a program that monitors and maintains Hanford's underground waste tanks. Senator Wyden toured the nation's most contaminated nuclear site Tuesday after reports that one tank here was leaking. He's the chairman of the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee and is now calling for a wider investigation after Friday's report that six tanks are now leaking hazardous waste. People in Japan's northernmost island say they don't want a nuclear plant near them. Hokkaido residents ask the government to stop building a facility. Electric Power Development Company, or J-Power, is constructing the plant in Oma on Japan's main island. The town is 23 kilometers by sea from Hakodate in Hokkaido. Work was stopped after the 2011 quake. It was resumed in October 2012. Heads of Hakodate and five of the cities submitted the request to the gov uh, central government. I don't think there's any need for the construction to go forward. The mayor also said people are worried about the safety of the plant because it's just across the water. City officials say they're considering filing a lawsuit to demand a stop to the construction. 
Iranian officials announced that they have selected 16 locations as suitable for construction of new nuclear power plants. The government wants to stress its resolve to continue promoting nuclear development for peaceful purposes, ahead of a meeting on Tuesday with six nations, five UN Security Council permanent members, and Germany. The head of the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran, Farai Duin Abbasi, said on Saturday that planned construction sites include areas near the Caspian Sea and on the coast of the Persian Gulf. Abbasi added that Iran has found new deposits of raw uranium for its nuclear program, boosting reserves fivefold. Iran started operating a nuclear power plant last year in the southern city of Boucher to cope with domestic demand for more electricity. Also on Saturday, Iran's top nuclear negotiator, Saeed Jalili, said his country will pursue its right to nuclear development and will not accept anything beyond its obligations. Jalili also serves as the secretary of Iran's Supreme National Security Council. He says he hopes Western countries will not repeat past mistakes. All eyes are on whether the upcoming negotiations will lead to a breakthrough in Iran's nuclear program. The United States has offered to hold a bilateral meeting with Iran on the sidelines of the upcoming nuclear talks. Representatives of six world powers and Iran are set to reopen talks on Iran's nuclear program. Delegates will meet for the first time in eight months, but they enter the meetings in Almaty, Kazakhstan with a measure of skepticism. Kazakhstan's President Nursultan Nazarbayev met beforehand with European Union Foreign Policy Chief Catherine Ashton and Iran's top nuclear negotiator Sai Jalili. Nazarbayev said he hoped the talks would bear fruit once and for all. Delegates are demanding that Iranian scientists stop enriching uranium to 20 percent. Beyond that point, they can quickly move toward uranium that's weapons grade. The United Nations Security Council, the U.S. and the EU have imposed sanctions to encourage the Iranians to abandon their nuclear ambitions. The Iranians want those penalties to be relaxed. But Iranian leaders show little sign of slowing down their nuclear program. Last week, they announced the construction of new nuclear plants and the introduction of a new centrifuge in one facility. U.S. researchers say authorities in North Korea may be ready to conduct another underground nuclear test. They've detected more activity at a facility in the country's northeast. A team from Johns Hopkins University released a report showing the latest satellite photos. One of the pictures was taken on February 13th, the day after the test. The other was taken two days after that. The researchers say the first photo shows no movement around the site. They speculate that personnel stayed away until they could confirm radiation levels were safe. The second picture shows an entrance to a tunnel covered with nets along with some people and vehicles. The researchers say they believe workers were removing data and equipment from the site and they say they noticed a new road near another tunnel. Authorities in Pyongyang have given a hero's welcome to the people who carried out the test. Officials from the ruling Workers' Party invited the scientists and engineers to the capital. State-run television show the big welcome. Analysts say authorities organized the event to drum up solidarity. Japanese government officials are looking to their counterparts in China to help contain North Korea and punish it. A senior diplomat has traveled to Beijing for discussions. North Korean authorities conducted an underground nuclear test last week and they're threatening more action. The head of the Foreign Ministry's Asian Affairs Bureau, Shinsuke Sugiyama, will meet on Wednesday with China's special envoy on Korean issues, Wu Daiwei. Sugiyama declined to comment at the airport, but Japanese diplomats say he will call on the Chinese to help adopt a new UN Security Council resolution authorizing more sanctions against North Korea. They say he's also expected to ask officials in Beijing to persuade North Korean authorities not to conduct any more nuclear or missile tests. Authorities in Pyongyang have given a hero's welcome to the people who carried out the nuclear test. Officials from the ruling Workers' Party invited the scientists and engineers to the capital. State-run television showed residents waving artificial flowers as buses carrying the experts pass by. The group is expected to visit Kim Sun Palace, where late leader Kim Jong-il lies in state, and will attend a number of other official events. 
Some have even suggested leader Kim Jong-un may attend a banquet in their honor. In a rare move, a North Korean group promoting private sector exchanges with foreign countries has sent letters to Japanese citizens to seek their understanding of the North's policies. The letters were sent after North Korea conducted its latest, latest nuclear test on February 12th. At least 10 people received a copy of the same document, including a senior member of a Japanese group working for friendship with North Korea. The letter accuses the United States of exercising a double standard. It says the U.S. criticized North Korea's satellite launch in December as a cover for a ballistic missile test. However, the U.S. did not make an issue of similar launches by Japan and South Korea. The letter also said denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula would make progress if the United States and other countries abandoned their nuclear arms first. It is not very common for the North Korean group to send letters directly to Japanese citizens to explain the country's stance. Japan and North Korea improved bilateral relations last year. They held official meetings for the first time in four years. And a group of Japanese was allowed to visit the graves of relatives who died in the north around the end of World War II. NHK's reporter says North Korea may be trying to send a message that the nuclear test was conducted as a countermeasure against the United States, but was not meant to worsen ties with Japan.